fine with me. Heard the brake set. The big magnets are set. Boom! C set. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Dispatching. They do have enclosed boots here. Yeah. So it turns out Steel Eel does this weird thing where the train can't fully park in the station until the train ahead of it clears the lift. I don't know why it was programmed this way, and it's technically not bad operations, just really poor programming, uh, but it definitely did not set a good mood for the day. It seems like an underpark. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, just underpark. Oh, okay. It's a very fun ride, Steel Eel. Um, however, their operations here are probably the worst I've ever seen at a park. This is bad. Uh, some departments definitely care. Maintenance department for sure. They're, uh, They've got some very well-painted, well-maintained rides, uh, however, operations are atrocious. Very bad. Very bad. All around, not just being slow. They just don't know their policies, just very bad. So, um, we're in line for Great White, which is a B&M invert. They are running two trains, and it is a busy day, as you can see by the line here. However, they just dispatched a train with three empty cars. Three empty cars. I get they have, they do have one car closed. Um, you know, every other car closed for COVID, which is one thing. It's a dumb policy because you can run other inverts in COVID without cars closed. We just rode one at, uh, over Texas a day ago. Same Batman clone. Hi. Um, I knew their operations would be bad, but they are atrocious. This is the worst operations I've ever seen at a park. Um, they've just now sent the train, and it's been sitting there for a good two or three minutes before I started recording. So, yeah, pretty bad. There we go. Let's see how many empty rows there are. One, two. And look at that, the entire back of the train is empty. Back three cars are empty again. With a, with a line like this. Uh, this, is, this is terrible. He's not doing it. Uh, so, uh, Irish is okay. All right, gates are open. Yep. Gates are closed. Okay, we're off to a good start. Lift is clear. do have to stack, so or they don't have to stop. Yeah, uh, speaking of that, we'll look over in a couple of seconds and you'll notice that not only are there trains not locked, but right over there, train coming into the brakes, right past the trucks, that's when you can send the ride. So precise, All right, so I'm a little over Great, great White is ready. It's been 57 seconds for my timing, but I started a little late. over a minute for me. All right, restraints are still not locked. So there's two rings and two boxes along the line. We can move up in the line here. All right, restraints, restraints are, are now locked. One minute and 16 seconds after the train parked in the station. They really get had a Batman clone at a Six Flags park, that train would be rolling. They'd be, be moving by now. Now up to three minutes. Alright, so they had to get, get a guest off. Guess problems happen. That's not the problem here. It's not the main problem here. It's not helping. It's not the issue, though. Yeah, exactly. Nice.
from the last time I checked in. Yep. Uh, we're at 340 right now. Still got associates just gently walking back to safe zones. They're all coming back. All right. And then, we actually get some progress about four minutes later. Yep. We are. Oh. All right. Okay. Okay, it's the floor drop. One minute in London school. There we go. And there's the floor. Okay, so the train sent. Four minutes and two seconds. Four minutes. Two seconds. Oh, nice. Okay. And there it goes. Good job. Good job. And that's just being lazy at the panel. <laughs> And look at that, we have empty rows. Perspective of everyone watching right now. Larger rides such as Cedar Point and even at chain parks like Universal Studios, rides such as the Incredible Hulk, Raptor, Val Raven, those can send trains at about 30 seconds after parking at the station. And the majority of those rides, if you see them dispatch a train before the other one that they just sent comes back, that's dispatching within a minute or a minute and a half. So when you see those operations as compared to this, it really just shows the fall chains in World San Antonio operations. And this was a similar experience we had on the wheel. I'm hoping for better things at Wavebreaker and at Texas Stingray, but I'm not hopeful so far. Yeah. If they do get better, I would love to let you know. Alright, we are now headed on to Stingray. Okay. Is, is this the official shortcut? Um... The, the operation seemed to have gotten at least a little better uh, after we stopped filming. They did speed up quite a bit on the Batman clone. Uh, we'll see how they are over here. Yeah, it, it's not great, but it is at least tolerable. They actually made a really nice cube for this ride, but I've never seen it in the white building. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, we're gonna give Texas Stingray a shot, the new for 2020 GCI. Oh, that was that was an amazing ride, and guess what? Their their operations got better too. That was, they were consistently dispatching as soon as the trains that was on the course came back. I mean, I'm impressed. Yeah, that was, that was perfectly fine. Up for a great white and steely. Yeah, that, that was a lot better already. Um, you can definitely tell it's their uh, flagship ride right now. Yeah, definitely. They're doing a good job running it. Um, that was a great ride too. Super fun. You can record after you get your stuff out. Huh. Every row? Except the front, for some reason. I'm sure they just didn't. So for anyone who uh, just watched that, um, they closed the gates at intervals. <laughs> At dispatch interval. Please sit up right. They should have sent the train. They can't take the single seat. Nice. No one down at merge. Yeah, there is no one down at merge. And there was, there was, there was a operator who walked right by as two people line jumped the whole queue. Very nice. So they're letting people line jump. They're not merging in quick queue properly. So that can also be line jumping for Exactly. So that's a really good look. Um, and then they've been stacking. Stacking. Very badly. Train's about to come back. Yep, here comes the train. Impressive. Train has stack. With two. Can we go on number three? Thank you. You will not be joining us for the remainder of the day. Once again, you must keep your mask on at all times, covering both your mouth and nose. Thank you. So, the ride is ready. The ride has been ready. The ride is completely stacked. Associates are back into their safe zones now. Ooh, we're not looking at the worst dispatch of the day. Two minutes is bad. Um, that being said, that honestly was probably the best dispatch I've seen at this park all day. So we did just get a wave breaker. That uh, confirmed what we saw over at uh, Great White earlier today. These operations, I think, are pretty easily the worst operations we've both ever seen. Absolutely. It's, it's definitely a perfect example of a decent park. That could be so much That could be really good.
it's being the wonderful part. Being, the rides aren't bad. Being absolutely ruined by horrible operations. It, it's genuinely ruining the guest experience. It's it's bad. The rides are great. Um, I personally really like Steel Eel. I know Chase doesn't that much, but we all agree that Texas Stingray is a great ride. Texas Stingray is wonderful. Wave Breaker is a wonderful fact. Wave Breaker is fun. Yeah. yeah. Great White is probably the best b &M Batman quote I've written in a hot minute. Um, but overall, uh, there's just something wrong. There is something majorly wrong with, with this park. It just—it feels too sparse. Yeah. I, I feel like I could excuse all of the other problems if the operations were decent. But when you... That's great, isn't it? Now you were talking about a corporate feel. That, that about proved it. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyways, pick up where you left off. Anyways, I feel like I could excuse everything else that's wrong with the park because it, genuinely they're small issues. But when you get... When you have a ride like Wavebreaker, there should be sending trains, what, every 60-ish seconds at, at least, interval? Yeah. About? I don't know exactly when an interval is, but uh, based off the timer on the screen, you have 65 seconds from when the train parks, when that timer runs out. At the very least, you should be hitting that. Yeah, or, or maybe a little slower since we were on two and it's probably potentially designed for three. So, either way, they should. it's fine if they stack, that's one thing. But if you're stacking and then you're waiting an extra two, three, four, five minutes on top of that, like we, if you're waiting an additional two, three, four, five minutes for no discernible reason. No, there was no you reason. You never have to move the, a larger guest yes. from one seat to another back to the original seat and then kick them off. Yes, so, so that was something we saw at Wavebreaker. They just cannot deal with guest issues at all. They slow down the whole operations process. It's genuinely just an infuriating, infuriating experience riding rides here. And from my background, I really like SeaWorld parks. Like, I love SeaWorld Orlando. It's one of my favorite parks I've ever been to. I was really wanting to like this park, but it is, I, I genuinely can't. No matter how hard I try, I can't excuse some of these operations. I'm gonna go ride Steel Eel one last time, and then we are leaving. We're gonna go to Six Flags Fiesta Texas, um, because even that should be a million times better than what we've experienced here. Personally, I think if you have two days in Texas, uh, San Antonio area and you want to hit two parks, hit Fiesta and hit ZDTs because it's better than this. So I thought I was going to ride Steel Eel one more time, but no. Uh, they don't stagger sanitations here and when they do sanitize, they do it extremely slowly. So they don't stagger sanitations so it's all, all the rides go down at once. Which, you know, Cedar Point didn't do that either, but the difference is Cedar Point can sanitize trains in five minutes. At Magnum, we could do it in about five, a little under if we were fast. Um, Here it's consistently taken about 15, 15 minutes. 15 so minutes. 15 minutes off every hour where the rides are completely not operational. They're still allowing people to queue for them. Yeah. Um, which, which they weren't even doing earlier. So, right. I mean, so that's the a... inconsistency of steel wheels. Yeah. Um, it led to overflowing non-distance lines at um, Great White and Wavebreaker. Yep and it's about to do the same thing at Steel Eel. A couple of people went to go see the shows. If the shows are worth it, yeah, then we will let and, you and know. And for some people, for that some may pe be. People, shows are worth it. Animal yeah. exhibits are worth it. Yeah, the water park people. may be worth it if you combine the main park and the water park yes. when they're both open. Yes. However, for us today, for us who are people who like rides, and I'm sure most of you are as well, it's uh, unfortunately disappointing. Yeah, it's a very underwhelming and the lack of care mm -hmm. in the guest experience is just atrocious. It really is. Really ruins the whole park. But yeah, that'll wrap it up here from SeaWorld San Antonio, and we'll see you at Fiesta, Texas.